I now recognize Representative Mark Green, who's the ranking member of the Subcommittee on the Western Hemisphere, Civilian Security, Migration, and International Economic Policy for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Chairman Meeks and Ranking Member McCollum. Thank you to our <coughs> witnesses for being here today and testifying, but more importantly for your many years of public service. I think most Americans get that the execution of the withdrawal has left us wounded internationally. It's harmed our allies. Most importantly, it's left American citizens behind enemy lines. But 20 years of mistakes are not an excuse for a bad withdrawal. It certainly doesn't justify the material support, $85 billion worth of military equipment given to a terrorist organization. But I've spoken about this many times, and today I'd really like to focus on the future. Uh, General McMaster, my first question is for you, and I'd like to ask sort of a uh, satellite view question. Now, I enjoyed your book. One of the points you made was that the U.S. has had 20 one-year-long strategies throughout the war. Uh, you know, also I see over the past 10 years our, our political parties seem to be dividing. Uh, ideologically, there's there's less overlap than there was 10 years ago. Given our history, our, our current division, which, by the way, our strategic partners are zeroing in on, how do we draft long-term strategies of country, not just specific to this region, although this region is really critical, CCP, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, that whole, but how do, how do we as a nation, you know, come together and, and, and look at having a, a long-term strategy? Gosh, you know, I th thank you, Representative Green. It really, it starts with leadership, a leadership, a leadership uh, at the presidential level, uh, and then it really in the national security structure uh, run by the National Security Advisor to coordinate and integrate efforts across the departments and agencies to first understand the complex challenges we're facing internationally. I think this is a step that is often skipped, and I think it was skipped too often in Afghanistan. I mean, we actually in Afghanistan conjured up the enemy we would prefer to fight rather than the actual enemy that we were fighting. And much of our strategy was based on that, as also based on unrealistic assumptions about what drove and constrained the Pakistani army leadership and its behavior. So I think framing complex challenges Challenges first, design thinking, and then what's really important for Americans today on, on across the political spectrum is to understand the so what? Why the hell do I care about this, right? And so identifying what vital interests are at stake, viewing that challenge through the, through the lens of the vital interests, and crafting clearly articulated goals and more specific objectives. And then the step that is skipped, I think, oftentimes that comes back to bite us is assumptions. Assumptions about the degree to which we and like-minded partners have agency and influence over this challenge. And then, of course, identifying op opportunities and, 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 to, and, and obstacles to overcome. Uh, and that, that, then you can frame out a strategy and have a meaningful discussion uh, about really what the American people need to know more than anything. What is at stake? And then what is a strategy that will deliver a favorable outcome at an acceptable cost and risk? That's been missing. And that's the strategic competence I'm talking about. And I allude to in the statement for the record. Well, thank, thanks for the answer on that. I, I, one of the things that uh, myself and a colleague across the aisle, uh, Dean Phillips, we're, we're creating this thing called uh, a uh, journal club where Democrats and Republicans sit down and instead of just getting the five minutes where we vomit our questions and, you know, we actually have a dialogue. And uh, my, my question to all of our witnesses, we are, we're going to have our first one coming up next month. And uh, Richard Haas has agreed to bring one of the articles he's written to that and discuss it. Of course, I, I extend the invitation to all my colleagues on the on the panel. And I know Dean does as well on the on the committee to join this. I, my question to all of you is, would you consider joining us, uh, you know, as a guest speaker at our one of our future journal clubs, I would Absolutely. certainly be honored. I think we can of be course. kind of us on that. Well, thank you, thank you for that. You know, the goal here is dialogue because for us to have my perception is for us to have a, an effective strategy as a nation. You know, we we got to agree on some stuff and we got to talk about what we don't agree on, and then maybe we won't wind up like we have the last twenty years with a new strategy every year. Um, Mr. Chairman, the clock was for me, and I don't know, do I have any time? Yeah, you a have minute a minute 30. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, question to really one how is the Pakistan basically with the new Afghanistan, and what does that mean for us, our partner, specific India? I don't know if anyone could understand that. You broke up, Mr. Green. Okay, I'll ask it again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Real quickly, uh, 
how is the PRC and Pakistan's relationship going to change? How is the PRC Afghanistan relationship going to change under the new reality? Well, that's a critical question. Is the, is the PRC is going to uh, carefully uh, move forward because of something that Ambassador Crocker mentioned, uh, their soft underbelly uh, with the Uyghurs uh, in the West. So uh, they, although they approach this, uh, our departure with a certain amount of schadenfreude, uh, it is the case, I think, that they know it's not an open playing field for them. They will, however, uh, continue to support Pakistan, which could lead them to trouble. And right now, the, the difficulties between Pakistan and China are very real. They're not shooting at each other, but they are fighting with each other in the mountains. Uh, that's a great, uh, and it, real quickly, and maybe this question will, will just be out there and you guys can get back with me offline. I have suggested Northwest India as a location for some over-the-horizon stuff. That wound up getting all in the India press. I wound up on the Today Show in India, I guess, but... Um, I would love to get your thoughts, perhaps in writing, to the idea of Northwest India for Over the Horizon. Gentlemen's time has now expired. Um, I would now 